Good morning, my dear colleagues and friends. Today is the last time I am here interacting with you as the spokesperson for the president of the GA, Ms. Maria Fernanda Espinosa. Last Friday, some of you were here when we spoke about the great cooperation we had. So once again to you, many, many thanks for the excellent job you did and the terrific working relationship. I really appreciate it. Today, however, and prior to her entering this room, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the woman who made all of this possible. Working over this last year with and for Ms. Maria Fernandez Espinosa was a lifetime honor to me. I am grateful and humbled for the trust she deposited in me, in my work, and in me as a member of her team. I can only give thanks to the PJ for having the opportunity to witness from a front row seat history being made. Ms. Espinosa was not only the first woman from Latin America and the Caribbean, as we all know, to become PGA. She also and her team produced excellent work in a record period of time. If you ask me about the way she delivered over the current GA session, I would tell you that numbers don't lie. I can say without a doubt that Ms. Espinosa and her team produced the equivalent work of several years in just one. And she did this, all this, with remarkable professionalism, with unique mastery of the UN issues, with warmth and quintessential diplomatic skills, with a down-to-earth attitude and always, always focusing on the needs of member states without forgetting the people, we, the peoples, the real people that she wanted to bring closer to the UN. So, you know, we talk a lot nowadays about models of compassionate leaders to solve our global challenges in an effective way. Well, over the last year, I can tell you, I saw a real one in action, the real deal, working day in, day out to deliver on the UN agenda, leaving no one behind. And I wish the world had more Spinozas to rely on. So thank you very much for your time. And now let's start our press conference, shall we? I will go to the back and see if Madam President has arrived. Thank you. Thank you for coming because I know it's a busy day for everybody. So thank you. That's okay, that's okay. That's uh, our colleague working with us today, another cameraman. And that today, Madam President, as in other press conferences, we have uh, uh, interpretation English into Spanish, so, and, and vice versa, of course. Thank you very much. And uh, without further ado, I think I uh, said some words before. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Did you watch the lovely video that was prepared by uh, the communications team under the guidance of uh, my dear spokesperson, Monica Grayley? So um, I think that was good, uh, you know, a good way to, to open uh, this uh, press conference. Uh, let me tell you at the outset that, as you know, I'm a huge defender of multilingualism, and especially in the work uh, that I do uh, with all of you. Unfortunately, I only speak three of the UN languages, but I try to use them and exercise them as much uh, as I can. And I, I really appreciate uh, the Spanish uh, department, Spanish news, of course, uh, because they reflect very much of uh, my own uh, region's culture, tradition, um, and also uh, I try and use French as, as much as I can. So uh, once again, um, good morning, everyone. It is really so nice to see you all again. And as you know, this is our last press conference, at least in my capacity as president of uh, the UN General Assembly. This time, instead of talking a large part of this interaction with uh, me reporting back, uh, we have decided to put on some highlights of my presidency, including some from the official trips I undertook in the video that you just saw. I think it's much better because it, images um, speak more than uh, 
uh, thousands and thousands of, of words. Uh, my office has just finalized a very comprehensive report which will be available online for all of you to look at. But I will give you some figures, of course, in advance of, uh, of the, of the uh, uh, report uh, before it gets uh, posted into our website. But as you know, I have um, created this practice of formally reporting back to member states every three months. So every th three months I share with all member states the summary of the activities of the General Assembly. I think this is, has been extremely useful, um, especially from, for some smaller missions that they cannot cover all the ground and all the agenda items. They can uh, all, always refer to the, um, to the reports that I share uh, with, with them. But I said I will share with you some of the numbers and figures uh, before the, uh, the overall report gets posted. But during the 73rd session, the General Assembly adopted 341 uh, resolutions. Uh, I think that, um, and perhaps we will have a little more. Uh, we, we are still uh, expecting, um, expecting perhaps to have a few more, but 341, I am told this, this is a record number in several, several years. Uh, and uh, there, there are 341, and basically my call to member states has been, let's read the resolutions that we have adopted again and let's deliver and implement using, you know, this norm-setting power of the General Assembly. And uh, I'm told that it is the highest number ever in resolutions of the General Assembly. Uh, we also had uh, the highest uh, number of agenda items since 2001. In total, we had 178 agenda items of the agenda. This session convened 108 formal plenary meetings, so nine meetings less than last year, and this was done in purpose because we tried uh, to streamline uh, the work of the General Assembly. I chaired uh, 64 of them myself personally, and, and the issue is that we tried to pack as many items as we could and streamline uh, the number of formal plenary meetings. We had more than 52 informal meetings of the plenary, briefings, interactive dialogues, thematic debates, and multi-stakeholder multi panels during the 73rd session of the General Assembly. In total, the GA had over the last session 55 informal consultations, 55. And uh, I have to say that I also uh, held these informal conversations with permanent representatives, nine of them during this year. Uh, this uh, uh, very well known now as uh, they're called the morning mingas. Uh, the word mingas, you know, means collective work. Uh, work in my uh, in Ecuador's traditional language, Quichua, minga means collective work. So we have had nine mingas. Uh, the um, the modality of the minga is basically Chatham House rules, informal conversations, and we circulate summaries of the conversations to all member states. Uh, the Minga's contents, reports, and summaries are also going to be posted uh, online. So we have delivered on all seven priorities. I would like to highlight, for example, the global campaign against uh, plastic, uh, the women in power, uh, high-level events, uh, my group of gender advisors, and uh, the sustained work on uh, gender parity and women's empowerment during the whole year. And, uh, of course, our work to advance multilateralism, the dialogue, the narrative, the interaction, the conversation about the irreplaceable role of the United Nations and the need to strengthen multilateralism. Uh, thanks uh, to the support we have received from member states, the Secretary General, the UN staff, from you as journalists and from individuals in general, I think that we have managed together to transform the UN headquarters in an area free from single-use plastics. And I feel very proud of that. This was really the walk the talk part. Uh, our global communications campaign to beat plastic pollution reached in the, in, in the region of 400 million people worldwide. And we have so the seeds for more global action against 
the modern day challenge of our seas and rivers, which is plastic pollution. Um, as uh, president, I convened 20 high level meetings of the General Assembly, 18 of which were based on the mandates from resolutions coming directly from member states, as well as two high high level events uh, at uh, my own initiative, uh, the Women in Power uh, series of events, and also uh, the work on disabilities and uh, our interaction with heads of state and ministers regarding disability inclusive development. As you know, my, my office also has led preparation for the six mandate high level meetings to be held in the margins of the general debate of the 74th session in the General Assembly. So my team and I uh, are responsible for organizing all the summit level meetings during high level week. So, but I think that in spite of, of the ambitious agenda, the amount of summit level uh, meetings, five of them uh, the coming week, we have been able to manage the choreography and to organize because as you know, I have a very able team. We have kept our promise to work every day in order to make the UN more relevant to all people and also to bring people closer to the United Nations. During this period, I granted over, listen to this number, 250 interviews, more than 15 press conferences in New York and abroad. 250 interviews, I cannot even believe that. But PG, and, and several of them to, uh, to you. Um, I undertook 22 official trips to 33 destinations in 30 countries. Everywhere I have been, as your president of the General Assembly, I sought to listen to people. I listened to women and girls, to young people, elderly people, the people who work and engage to make the world a better place, indigenous peoples, persons with disabilities. That was my condition to visit countries. Of course, the formal official visit, which is extremely important, but also the contact with people on the ground. And everywhere I went, I met with the UN country team as well to see how the, um, how the uh, um, reform process was going also on the ground. So, and uh, to me, this is key, you know, to keep listening in order to create a more just, prosperous and sustainable world. I will not and now stop here. I, I'm very eager to listen to your questions. And um, I thank you very, very much for being so close to our office, for being so engaged and interested in the work that we did. And uh, now the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Madam President. And the 